Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and this is part two of how I built my pumpkin house. I built this house out of foil, masking tape, and paper towels, and I filmed the entire process, and that is in part one. So you can look in the pinned comment below for that link, or also look in the i cards on your screen. So, so in this video, I'm going to start off by making a little staircase in the back of the pumpkin. I'm also going to be adding a room in the tree. I'm going to finish off the fireplace on the inside. I'm going to do cardboard floors and I'm going to be adding a little extension on top of my roof. So let's get started. So I got a couple of ideas and I'm thinking about adding a little doorway here and a little staircase that would go up into the tree and see that this is hollow. I could turn this into a little bedroom. So it's going to be just like the chimney. I'm just going to poke a hole right through here. Tore everything off right down to the first layer of tape. And if I turn it around, you'll see light coming through. That's how close I've gotten to the surface. See that? <laughs> right there. But it's still solid and I can still build around it. And once I'm finished with the room, then those walls will be built back up again. But I'm squishing them pretty hard and I can't, you know, I can move them, bounce them, but I can't break them. I would have to take a knife to tear them down. And it looks like... If I can focus in there, I might be able to get my second staircase in without wrecking that first one on the inside with just minimal damage over there. So I just kind of widen this out a little bit more as much as I could without wrecking the staircase on the other side. And I got it done. I'm really happy about that. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to do the paper towel in here now. And this is going to be closed back up. But I want to do the stairs first because it'll be a heck of a lot easier with this open to do the stairs. Right. And I've cut this little section off here. There was, I had hollowed this out and left a section across. I cut that off. I'm not sure if I'm going to be adding a roof yet or not. We'll see when we get there. And then, of course, I've got a little space for a window there. I did add another little branch up here. So it's the same thing, just rolled up foil. Left the bottom open, just like I did with the stem, so it had something to grab onto. So I just put it on there. Well, hot glue it first, tape it all around, and then my paper towel. So there's quite a bit of overlap here, and that just ensures that everything becomes one solid piece once that paper towel is dry. So down here is all dry and ready for paint. There is paper towel in there. It's You can't see it because it's the color of masking tape now. It's completely dry. And I made a little back piece. I'm doing this the same way I did the chimney. I'm just going to add this... Once I'm finished working on the stairs, I'll add this on here and I'll cover that in. So what I'm doing right now is making a little filler for this uneven part. So I wanna bring this level up to this one before I put on my floorboards. So this is cereal box. I found three of them was the perfect height for there. And because I didn't uh, sand the pieces first, I put the glue down and I'm just gonna put some masking tape to make sure they never pop apart in the future. show you real quick how I did the pumpkin floor and if you don't like it that's totally fine I just couldn't decide on a color so I chose them all <laughs> so I have green gray beige orange red and black and it's just a series of dry brushing just like how I aged the uh, door in the steps so this is black and then raw umber over top and I'll just start with the beige and dry brushing you want to get most of the color off and I did take an X-Acto knife down the middles of these and where I thought most of the uh, traffic would be on the floor. Okay, and a little bit of red. And then the orange. And I just keep doing that until I get through all the colors. So for me, this looks like repurposed wood. Like they would have gotten this off of an old barn or something that's been painted a few times. That's what I think of when I see that. All right, my friends, in the next clip, I'm going to show you how I installed these stairs. And you can see I've already put my floorboards down. I noticed when I was editing my clips that it's so hard to see in here and all you can really see is just my hands at work and stuff. I decided to show you how I'm gonna do the floorboards up here. So I'll do the exact same floor. It'll be a different color, but I'll do the exact same floor up here. Yeah, that way we can just keep a, a good flow going because it's really hard to see in there and it's hard to work in there as well. I have to kind of like, you know, loom over the, the thing and you can't really see. 
And the other thing I want to mention, just in case you're, you're following along the same sort of design that I've got going on here, I've installed these stairs from the front to the back. So the front went in first and I through individual and I made these little risers after I put each one in because I had to fit them individually. And what I didn't do was paint them black and I should have because looking from that window in, I could see some of this cardboard. I did get a paintbrush in there with black and I've painted them now, but if you're doing the same sort of design, make sure that you color these before you put them in. You don't have to color the back side, of course, just the front side, the part that's going to be seen if you look through the windows. And one last thing before we get started, each stair was made with the paper towel on it first. Because remember in part one, I do that so I don't have to see the open edges of the cardboard. We don't have to do that for floorboards because they're all hidden. All those edges are hidden by each other. But for these ones, I don't want to see those edges, open edges, so I just cover them with the paper towel first. And I do show that in part one. All right, so let's get started. So I'm just figuring out my stairs here and I got part of my floor down. I painted the hallway green and the bottom stair has the rise already glued onto it. And I just have to place this in here and I believe I have another little, yes, here it is, another little rise I can stick behind it. Now these uh, stairs actually are, are cut to fit exactly in there and they're a tight fit so I don't have to worry too much about them moving around. So I'm going to slide this piece underneath there but first I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on it. I got some glue on the top and the bottom. I'm just going to slide it underneath but it's just going to sit right underneath the stair and I don't need it to be perfect. It just needs to sit under there so the stair has something to sit on. And then I'm going to brush in some glue around the sides. And now my second stair, I'm just going to slide this into place. I'm just going to mark it from this side. There's my angle. And see if that actually fits in there. And it does, so I'll make another one. I'm going to glue these two together. And so I don't have to wait for them to dry, I'll just stick some masking tape on there. And just make sure that fits. So I'm sticking a pencil in between the other two stairs so it doesn't fall all the way through. See the pencil there? So I got some glue on here on the top and bottom and the side. And I'm going to slide it underneath and I'll use my pencil to catch it so it doesn't push all the way through. And that's installed. I'll still paint some glue in around the sides. Okay, and then my third stair. And I've shaped them in a way that they round the corner. Same thing, I'm going to fit this piece in here. Okay, and my last one is shaped really weird but it fits in there just so. This one I can add glue on the side because it just works out that way. Okay, and again, plenty of glue. And once that glue dries, it's not going anywhere. All right, these are all dry now. I set the fan on here for a few minutes and I just gave everything a little wiggle and I can see that everything is solid and nothing's gonna be going anywhere. So I'm going to be closing up the back and you can see I did paint it black and I'm gonna leave it black. Like I said, when I look in through the window, I can see these stairs going up and I can't see where they go to and that's what I wanted. So I'm going to enclose this just the same way I did with the chimney with hot glue and tacky glue. Get that back on there and then I'm gonna add my bark layer over here and make it part of the bark up here. Not sure if I'm going to add a frame or not around that hallway or the doorway I should say. And I finished my floorboards and like I said I'm going to show you how I do that in the next room. I really like the color actually. I wasn't sure for a while, but it's kind of grown on me. And then I got the top piece in here that's glued in. Now I'm just doing the bottom piece. And I don't think I showed this earlier. I did cut it in a way where it frames the step and it adds a little bit more interest and decoration, I think. And I glued on the front rise. And then I just made a little piece for the back so it has something to sit on while the glue dries. And I'm not going to add any hot glue because the stair just sits flat and on its own, so it doesn't need any help with the hot glue. Okay, 
I really like how those turned out and I think framing the bottom step the way I did just gives it a lot more interest and finishes off nicely with those rounded edges. A little note about my door because I am going to install this but I'll do it in part three because I'm going to be building a frame around it and I'm not able to do it in this video. So we're going to talk about the doorknob. In part one I had built this side of the door and I hadn't decided at that time if I was going to do the other side of the door, if it was going to be seen from inside of the pumpkin. I was just kind of figuring out des the design as I went along. So after I did this side, decorated, added the doorknob, then I decided, yep, I'm going to be decorating the other side of the door. And what I did was I put the doorknob over here, if you remember in part one. So it's, it's the opposite side of where the first doorknob is. Now, of course, you don't do that in real life. I had done it on purpose because at the time I was building, it was after midnight, I was super tired, and I was thinking about the, the design in here, the way my fireplace was going to be and all that. I wanted the door to swing open from this side. And I, I thought in my head, it doesn't really matter because it's not going to be a door that opens anyway. It's just looking at it, you would imagine it would swing open that way. But thinking about it the next day and after a good night's sleep and after a lovely comment from somebody who said to me, you know, how are they going to open the door when the doorknob's on the wrong side? <laughs> Which makes sense. For me at the time, it made sense why I put it over here. But then, yeah, no, it's, it's kind of crazy to do it that way. So I did move it. And what happened was it ended up being too big for over here because my decorative boards are angled here. So I had to cut my twig in, in half. But then it turned out so much nicer in the end because we got the bigger twig on this side and then we got the nice little knob on this side. So I think it finished it off nicely and it was a process but I finally got there. So if in the future you see me do something as crazy as putting the doorknob on the wrong side and having some sort of rational thought behind it, I'm jumping off a cliff. Don't follow me. Just throw me some coffee <laughs> because chances are I'm super tired and um uh, my brain has decided to go to sleep and my body is still building. So we'll install the door in part three and in the next clip, we're going to tackle the fireplace. So now I'm working on the fireplace. I'm gonna create some stonework that goes around the fireplace hole there. So I just uh, shaped some foil. Now I'm gonna wrap it in masking tape. Now I'm going to put the paper towel on it and I'll let it dry and then I'll do some stonework. If you're afraid of using the hot glue the way I'm doing it here, you can put the hot glue right on the structure itself and then place the stones on top of that. And if you don't have hot glue, you can use just tacky glue. Once the stones are all glued down, then you want to put a layer of PVA glue over top. And I just rub it in with my finger. This will ensure that they all stay down. These paper cup trays are really cool. I've been working with them for years. I'm not too sure who first came out with the idea for them. But whoever did it was brilliant. It's really, really brilliant. I think the first time I saw it was about 10 years ago. And I think it was Victoria Miniland. I could be wrong about that though. But yeah, I think it was them that I first saw do it online anyway. All right, so I'm working on a mantle and that's three pieces of cardboard, like regular cardboard. And then I put paper towel over top so I don't have to use any wood filler or anything. And I'm just rounding out the owner. And then I'm going to paint it. So for this one, I think I'm going to try the cinnamon brown. All right, and now that's dry. I'm just going to dry brush on some black. And then just a touch of beige that gives some highlights. So hot glue and tacky glue together again. And I'll push it into place. And once the stones were in place, then the mantle went in the same way. Hot glue and tacky glue together. So I'm going to cover this in the paper cup trays as well. I got some tacky glue in there and I also put some on the very uh, front side underneath. And you'll notice that I kept this side raised up until it was already all the way in and then I pushed it down and that was so I wouldn't get any glue on my floor here. I get these at the dollar store 
And I believe these were like $1.50 for a pack of two. And I use these all the time in little stoves. So my fireplace is really deep and this gets buried inside there. You can't even see it. But if yours isn't as deep as mine, uh, you can paint it. And I've done this before as well. I'll just put a little tape on it because the plastic, it's hard to paint over plastic, right? Unless you have like a primer. But we don't want to go through all that. So let's just cover it with some tape. Okay, I'll let that dry in front of my fan. All right, guys, just to save some time, I'm going to keep this super simple. I'm going to add a little bit of glitter in here. I haven't used glitter before. I was just looking for my red beads because I used that the last time I did a stove and I couldn't find them, but I found I had some of this here and I hate glitter. Glitter is from hell. <laughs> it's a horrible, horrible thing, <laughs> but I have it on hand. So let's just use it then. Remember the last time I did a stove, I went looking for glitter and I couldn't find it. All I could find was beads. Now it's the other way around. So we'll let that dry. Before we move on, I should mention, if you wanted to do something spectacular with your flames, you can do different things like hot glue flames. Uh, do that search here on YouTube. And I have one with candy wrappers and red beads, like I said. So there's different options. You don't have to keep it super simple. You can make it as spectacular as you like. See in this room that the walls are extremely bumpy and that's because I didn't pay any attention to them at all when I was putting them together. I was thinking about different things that I could do or show you how to fix that. So you do have some options. You could use a clay and I use a homemade clay and if you choose to use the same sort of clay then you would want to do the clay before putting in your floor because the clay is a little bit wet just slightly and enough to discolor your boards. I've done that before. You can also use a drywall compound. I would again do the walls first and then put in the cardboard floor. And then the third option, which I'm going to do right now, is a cereal box. Now my walls are going to be slightly slanted, getting more narrow up towards the top, which I don't mind because trees are kind of like that. And I'm just tapering the ends. Everyone's going to be different depending on how your room is built. I want to taper them so that it sits flat on the bottom. And depending which side you're going to glue to the wall, if it's the shiny side, then it needs to be sanded first. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, if your wall has a big dip in it, where there's going to be too much of a dip to glue to, you can fill that in with foil and tape. And then I would stick some paper towel over it because the paper towel is going to help whatever you put on it stick better. So I'm going to cut this here so it sits flat. I could cut that off actually. So my window on the other side, I'm just going to mark it off with a felt pen so I know where to cut it out. So around the window, I'm going to be putting tape and pulling it tight and then taping on the other side. And I'm going to fix that with uh, bark on the other side. So I think that's the best option if you have no clay or a drywall compound. I would have preferred working with clay or drywall compound because I think it looks really cool when the finish is done. But to keep it fair for everyone who doesn't have those sort of materials and to keep the theme going of working with just basic materials, I thought I would use the cereal board. I was just looking in my stash to see what I had to cover these walls with and I found some double-sided scrapbook paper, which is always nice because it's, it's thicker than regular scrapbook paper and less wrinkly. So I think I'll use that. Um, you can always use old wallpaper or just paint it. Or if you can come up with a texture paste and uh, spread it in there first and then paint it, that would be nice as well. It's sticking up a little bit from the floor, but I'm not too worried about it because I think my floorboards will cover that. And if not, I can always add a trim. A little bit wrinkly over here, but again, I'm not too worried about it because I can add accessories to cover that. When I got to my window, I did not pre-cut it or cut it out once it was on there. What I did was push everything into place and leave it for about five minutes, let the glue set a little bit. And then I poked a hole with my knife right in the center of the window. And then I slit 
right up to the corners. And then I just push those pieces in and I rub the glue down into the window frames. You can see there, I didn't cut anything away. Just slit them and then push them down with my finger and smooth it all out. All of this will be covered in with the window frame anyway, so it's better to leave it and not cut it out because then you don't have to worry about ripping anything. or. And I didn't fill in over here because I think I'm going to be adding a door. And if I change my mind later, I can always add a piece. Mostly up here is going to be covered in with the roof. So I wasn't too concerned about the very top either. I believe we can just move on to the next step now. And yeah, we can figure out more things later about fixing this down here. After we get the floorboards in, we'll see how much it covers down there. So let's do that next. I've already cut my boards and I used scissors again because I wanted uneven boards. If you want straight boards, then use an X-Acto knife and a ruler, of course. And just be sure when you cut them that you're cutting with the vertical lines in the cardboard. And I didn't measure mine. There's different widths there, two different widths. There's a three section and a four section. And, and by that, I just mean those lines there. So I would cut on the third line for one, and then I'd cut on the fourth line for another. All right. And you can paint them before you cut them, of course. I like cutting them first because I get paint a little bit in the the uh, sides here. Place them together to see what they would look like. Of course I'm going to be cutting these after but this is basically what they're going to look like and you can see these separation lines. I want those but with those you're also going to see what's underneath and because of that I'll paint this black. And these got painted black and you can see I have my fan here because like I said before you want these to dry as fast as possible to limit the amount of warping that happens when they get a little bit wet. So now I'm going to do the raw umber. And after the raw umber was dry, I aged them exactly the same way I did the door. So if you need to see that again, that's in part one. And you can look in the timestamps for the door part. I'll start somewhere here. I could start in the middle too. And you want to figure out which direction your boards are going to be going in, of course. Okay, so I tapered the end here so it will fit right up against the wall. And then I've cut it. The other end... A little bit too short, but that's okay. I think over there is where I'm going to be adding a door anyway, so that's why I'm going to start down here. And then the next step is optional. Wherever I've cut the boards, I just put in some black paint. Because you will see those lines, like on this floor here. You can see where I've darkened up every end. And that kind of adds age to the floor as well. But it's not something that's totally necessary. You don't have to do that. And I think the easiest way to do this would be to paint the glue on because you want to get right to the edges and try not to get glue on the top side of the board because it kind of leaves like a um, shiny part. And just like shingles, you want to stagger these. So you don't want the separation lines to meet up because that would look really funny. So you can cut this up here or cut this down here. So I have these cut and ready to go. While I'm preparing these with the glue and the paint, I just set a couple of paint bottles up here. And by the time I'm done preparing my next board, I probably can move these to the next board. The tacky glue grabs pretty quickly so you just want to make sure that you got full contact there before you move on. One little tip I'd give you is make extra boards just in case. I did have a slight little area here and I just used a leftover piece. It didn't turn out that great but I'm not worried about it because I can cover it up with a with like a bedside table or something. And then again, a door is going over here, so I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, every piece, you have to fit every piece individually, of course, especially when you're working in a room like this one where everything's uneven. But uh, working with cardboard makes it so much easier. And most of the boards meet up with the paper nicely, except for in this little corner here. So I might add a trim, or I might find something else to do there. I am not sure yet. I still have to edge this off with bark. And now I'm going to be adding a roof. I'm going to add a roof after all. So I was just playing around with some ideas, and I think if I had a peaked roof here, and in the back I put some bark so it looks like the roof goes right over top the bark. Just notice my hot glue gun is empty and I don't feel like getting another stick. So I'm going to stick this one on here without any hot glue and I do this a lot. I barely use any hot glue anymore actually. All I want to do is just build up more of a branch here. So I'll stick this on here. I'll use tape to hold it in place. Once I tape it all up and get the paper towel on there, it's all one piece anyway. And the hot glue isn't doing anything. Hot glue is just a temporary second set of hands for me. But when it's not available, I can still do it. So if you ever run out of hot glue, don't feel panicky because you can still continue on without it. I'm just working on the roof and I'm not really in love with it so far. So I was thinking of ideas of sprucing it up and I want to do this as quickly as possible too so I can get this video uploaded before too long. I'm kind of racing against time here. So I'm thinking about adding this little extension up here and I cut it on a slant, you can see, so it'll stand up here. I'm just constructing the extension of my roof 
And I'm thinking, because it has to be on slant there, this piece has to be the same length as from here to here. And then my back piece has to be the same length from here to here. So I'll just put this on here and mark that, and then I can cut it like that. And then this piece gets glued on the back side like this. Because I constructed this really fast and didn't give much thought, I wasn't thinking about when I connect these two sides together. So if I was to do it the way it is, then one of them has to sit out too far and I'll see those open edges and I don't want to see that. So what I'm going to do to fix that is just take my exacto knife, I've already done it to this one, and just cut down and pull those pieces out of there. I've done this side and I'll do this side and that'll give the other board enough room to butt up against it. Of course, I don't want to cut right through because I got my decorative boards over there. So I'm just going down so far and then I can stop and pull this off. I still got a little bit there. I could pull that off, but I don't want to wreck it. So I'll just leave it the way it is and I'll fix it up best I can with paint. But now we can butt this up against here and there's not so much showing. Before I put all the pieces together, I want to pop in a little window and I'm going to use this little stained glass witch that was actually supposed to be on the front of the pumpkin, but I ended up not doing it because it looked a little bit too busy over there. So I wasn't going to use her in this house at all, but then this roof came along, so now I get to do that. This is double cardboard, so it's thick enough. I can just pop her in there right in the center of those two layers. And what I can do is glue thread in all the way around the inside, and that will just hold her in. Oh my goodness, she's going to look so awesome. I'm going to be painting all the insides black of the room. And yeah, so when I pop the light in there, all you're going to see is her shining in front of that moon. I love it. So once again, I thought I was filming and I wasn't. I found this thread here. It's on the thin side, so I doubled it up. I put glue in all around the back. I did the back side and then just shoved the string in there. And that will hold her in once it's dry. It will also edge it off nicely. So if there's any open areas on this side, it won't show through. So if you're interested in doing a stained glass window, I actually just put one up for a mushroom. I did one in my gnome home and I show you how to do it on plastic or glass and you can use acrylic paint. I also show you how to get the image onto your glass because this image here is a free image found on Google. And I show you how to get it onto the glass and how to seal it all and it'll survive a scratch test. So that, that paint won't rub off of there if I scratched it. And that should be up in the i cards i also look in the pin comment below so i just tested this out and that is in there now it's i can feel it stuck i could push it out of course if i really wanted to but it's stuck now with that thread in there it's ran a bead of hot glue there and it's holding it up pretty good right now on its own i'll put the back piece on and i'll do the same thing with the hot glue so i got two pieces in and i'm going to run some tacky glue along this open edge and then i'll close it back up and i'll just hold it there for just a couple of seconds and then i'll move on to the third piece so I won't use hot glue for this third piece. I've already added the tacky glue at the bottom and I got some on the side there and I can just slide this into place. So my branches are already coming in handy. Got my fan sitting on there. So after I I fiddled around with this, made sure all the edges are meeting up just so. I popped on an elastic to hold everything together tightly while it dries. So I'm going to move on to the next step. I'll remove this. I'll add a bead of tacky glue along the outside edges of this extension just to make sure everything is nice and secure. And then my shingles will go in around it, of course. So I attached the other leaves here and got my roof done. And when I started that little extension on the roof with the stained glass window, I really wanted to see the witch from down here in between those branches. So I was imagining walking through the woods and looking up at my camera and seeing her through the trees, panning across the leaves and then getting a full view. So I just got a simple roof on there. I created a little stopper just to stop the light from escaping when I have it on. I raised up the floor in there with foil and cardboard and with the lights on it looks so cool. All right guys we're going to end the video here and in part three I'll make the character and decorate the house with furniture and all that great stuff. I'm hoping to get that done before Halloween and I'm really trying guys. I really am. Time is marching fast and uh, this project just kind of took on a life of its own. 
remember when I started, I was only going to do the pumpkin. And then I ended up doing the tree and the fencing and all that great stuff. And I had to do that room inside there, which took up a lot of time as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did make yourself a pumpkin house, as always, please post pictures on my Facebook page where the gnomes live or tag me on Instagram, Oyella underscore crafts. Those links are in the pinned comment below. All right, guys, until next time, we'll see you super soon.